There was, in fact, quite a, a, an uproar in the, in the seminar on account of this new development. Uh, and I think it's important to understand that it's not about the substance of the issue. It's not because uh, there is a desire for jurisdictions that register companies to reveal who the real owner of the company is. It's about the fact that uh, the Parliament of the United Kingdom has uh, made the United Kingdom government do something which in theory it should not have the power to do. The effect of this is that independent of the merits of whether you open company ownership up publicly or you don't, the fact that in the UK they're going to legislate for theoretically 10 overseas territories won't apply to everyone because there are some that, you know, Pitcairn Island doesn't have a company registry, only 50 people there. But the principle is that the United Kingdom has for years been arguing in the United Nations that all its 10 territories were no longer colonies. They changed, in fact, the name from dependent territories to overseas territories as part of that move. They were arguing that now they were fully self-governing to all intents and purposes and that the new constitutional relationship was one of a, a modern relationship which could in no way be described as colonialism. Well, look, if you've got 10 territories and they're not colonial territories, which means they're not ruled by you, they rule themselves, you cannot make rules for them in London and impose the law on the territory. By doing that, in effect, they've cut the ground from all their arguments. In the process, in fact, they've proved that the, the line that the GSLP took when I was uh, in, involved as a leader uh, uh, of the GSLP and the leader of the opposition in disagreeing with the interpretation of Peter Caruana and the GSD that the new constitution that came in had decolonized us, remember, to the extent that he went. He said, we're now no longer a colony, I'm not going to the uh, Committee of 24 meeting anymore, and I'm not going to the seminars anymore because there's no need for it because we're no longer a colony. And therefore, he went there and told them, we're not a colony, the UK agrees it's not a colony, we agree it's not a colony, so you have to deregister. Well, look, there is a procedure for deregistering, and it's not that the colony and the colonial power agreed between themselves. That is not the procedure. The procedure is the level of self-government. And the level of self-government has now had the whole basis of the argument de demolished by the action of, of the UK. And this, in fact, is something that the UN is undoubtedly going to take up with the UK on the basis that they cannot continue to argue these are not colonies anymore. And then a vote in the House of Commons changes all that and they impose legislation on the colonies. Indeed, some colonies are quite... Uh, upset. I'm talking about going for independence. Grenada was there. Uh, is independent already, but there was uh, places like Montserrat, you know, which is still a colony, the same as us. So the, the the thing, in fact, dominated one of the sessions. It wasn't really on the agenda, but it dominated one of the sessions in in that. And I think what it proves is that the analysis that we made uh, that. We continue to be a colony, we argued that. I mean, the GSD even used the argument that we were no longer a colony to say there was no longer a need for a self-determination rally in, on National Day in, 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 in casemates because we had already all used up uh, self-determination, we had already been decolonized. And therefore, we were, no, we were just now a family uh, outing and a holiday. Well, look, we didn't believe that, we continued. In fact, it's interesting that the new leader of the uh, GSD, Mr. Sopardi, agreed with us and not with the GSD and came to the casemates with the opposition to make speeches from the top of the car park. So I imagine he is making the same interpretation as I am of this.